for, first of all, thank you for joining this session. Um, it, it, it's kind of ironic because support is generally the last thing we think about. Everybody thinks about building a business through sales. They think about building a business through um, various means of marketing. And then, uh, then all of a sudden you have customers, you have a business, and what happens? You start looking at uh, attrition, things like churn, things, uh, things that don't grow a company. So I think, I think the number one thing I'd like to say about support before I tell you a little bit about my company and my background, more importantly, what I want to do is I want to, I want to explain a little bit about support, where the industry is going, and uh, a, a few other agenda items. But the, I think the most important thing to think about with support is, in my opinion, it's the new sales. Because if you don't support your customers and give them a, a, a fantastic customer experience, you won't have customers and you won't grow a business. So here's, here's today's focus. Um, we're going to talk about how the industry and customers have changed. We're going to talk about how sales has, the sales environment has changed. And uh, it, it's also ironic that Panasonic is not only a J-curve customer, but they were the, the company that was right before us because we believe everything's going mobile and everything's going to be uh, in some sort of a device scenario. Uh, and, and I've got one quick question. Who uses their cell phones more than their office phones today? Who very rarely uses their office phones? Let's say, uh, let, let, let's say 25% of the time or less. Those statistics right there will, will tell you, but we're gonna go in a little bit more about where the industry is going, and I believe it's going mobile. I think, uh, you know, everybody's talking about that, but, uh, but I'll, I'll get into a little bit of depth in there. And then, most importantly for your companies, owning the customer experience and how important that is. Because again, if you look at statistical analysis, sales is going down. And I was just explaining to this gentleman over there um, a, a little story about uh, Best Buy. I walked into Best Buy uh, a few weeks ago to buy a little video camera, one of those, uh, one of those flip it kind of video cameras. I started looking around at the infrastructure. There was hardly anybody there on noon on a Saturday. I mean, nobody there. And I walked out to the mall and I'm looking around. I'm saying, you know, these places are going away. Then I go to buy the, buy the camera and I say, hey, a friend of mine said they were about 114 bucks on Amazon.com. Right here, they're 179.99. And I said, you know, he, he said, well, let, let me check BestBuy.com. He got a little frazzled. Let me check BestBuy.com. He checked on the computer. He goes, yeah, we can sell it to you for 124.99. So I just cut their margin by 30%, cut their revenue by 30% use their overhead as a salesperson, and I'm looking around at an empty place and I'm wondering why. Who goes to malls on a regular basis anymore? <laughs> That'll tell you something as well. Then I'm gonna finally talk a little bit more about support and why it matters. And I'm gonna drive home the fact, I mean, I'm a, you're gonna hear this continuously. If you don't keep your customers, you will not grow. Support is more important than ever and we'll talk about how customers have changed, et cetera. A little bit about me. My background has always been in sales and service. And you know what? I've always believed that service was number one, sales was number two. And when I talk about that, uh, I started at a little, I mean, I've been in the telecom industry for the last 22 years. I started a little company called LDDS Communications, used to brag about it, started by Bernie Ebers, who now happens to be uh, in stripes, unfortunately. And we grew the business from, I was the 48th person at LDDS Communications, later became WorldCom, later became MCI WorldCom. We grew from 48 people to about 65,000 worldwide in a matter of 13 years. 87 acquisitions. An amazing run. But we got stung by exactly what I'm talking about here, too. So I was responsible for sales and eventually leadership. I went into executive leadership. And then I ran about a $500 million division of MCI WorldCom based out of Seattle in the Northwest, living in London, uh, New York, and then eventually, like I said, Seattle, Wisconsin, different places. I was a fix-it guy. I used to run around. I, I used to go to different territories and kind of turn around the sales organization. But I always did it through support. I'll explain in a little bit. Um, after that, I started a call center company. Uh, it was the typical call center company. We had GE as a customer, AOL Time Warner, some very large deals. Our value proposition was challenging because I walked in, I said, hey, we can do it cheaper, we can do it better, and we can do it faster. And we could. Then International crept up on us. And all of a sudden, they said they could do it cheaper. 
So no matter what, what happened was, no matter what, they would say, hey, we're going to go to India. We're going to go overseas. I, uh, you know, we're going to go near shore. We're going to go offshore. So what happened was pricing went down. At the economy at that time, labor costs goes up. It started to squeeze our margin. So I sold that business with about 450 people, and I started J-Curve. Real simply put, J-Curve Technologies provides level one and level two support along with a, uh, uh, along with a support solution, meaning CRM, uh, sometimes we'll build support portals for customers, et cetera, for hosted VoIP companies and other companies. Some of our notable clients are, are Panasonic, uh, Walmart, Voodoo Walmart, um, Trimble Navigation, Trimble. Uh, we're, we're talking to companies like you know, CenturyLink and the big telecoms as well. And we do a lot of uh, work with Broadsoft, and we're looking to do more with asterisk providers. And we provide a solution for small to medium-sized businesses. So if you're an asterisk provider, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to be able to have a partner that can handle level one and level two support. And then, obviously, if it gets into, uh, into level three or engineering, then we, then we escalate to you. So that's what we do. So let's go, uh, let's go focus on today. So how have, how have customers changed? Well, I think we are all customers at, at, at one thing or the other. So you have to think about, we're not easy to impress anymore, especially here in the States. Um, we want value. And you know what? It's no longer wanting value. We will demand value. And that's just the way it is. And we want the best price. We want a business partner, not just a sales guy. I mean, back to my comment earlier, you can do all the research online to buy a new car. Why do you need to go to a salesperson or a dealership anymore? You can order one. They're not going to give you much time. Time is a valuable commodity that cannot be duplicated. Very important to the, to the consumer and or customers today. And also, they want a faster response time. So you have to respond to those customers quicker. And most importantly, everybody's going mobile. Everybody's busy. Who in here isn't busy? Who in here doesn't feel like their life sometimes is just on a hamster wheel? I, I, think, I think we all feel that in American society today. So they're very different, and uh, this accentuates my points earlier. So beyond the value, or beyond the features of a product, they want value of their product or service. So all of you are providing a service, I believe, or a product. And they want their business partners now to take risks. So what does that mean to you? Well, the standard isn't OK anymore. Here's your widget. You pay for it. No problem. They want to smile. They want great support if it's a service. They need and they will demand, because of competitive reasons, for you to take risks now. Hey, why don't you undercut your price so you can do a better job for us? Undercut your price, and then maybe we'll get you to full margin. That, that's the consumer or the, the, the customer today. And I think we're all, we're, we're all experiencing that. So someone that understands the business model, customers, right? And I'll be, I'll be going through a chart here that shows how sales has changed. But customers expect you to know more about their solutions than they do. And you know what? They're going to research it online. Again, that web thing's happening. The web 2.0. And also, again, they're going to do their own research so they don't, they don't think they need you. So your job as a business owner, as a deliverer of a service or product, is to prove to them that they do need you and to prove that you're a valid source for information, you're a valid source for what they're trying to accomplish, and you're a valid business partner that is willing to take risks. Uh, I talked about faster response times. But um, you know, for, for, for those of you that are providers, you need to think about the mobile, uh, the, the mobile experience, because everything's going mobile. And I don't just mean mobile phones. I mean iPads and different mobile applications. And you know, everything's going mobile. So we don't want to sit at home or sit at our desks anymore. We need to communicate differently. And this is, you know, this is a perfect example of what, what Digimastris is talking about. Everybody's going to be eventually going mobile, and you know the, the, the desktop is going to change. The world is already changing, and we're going to talk about this in a moment. So how has the sales environment changed? Well, what did we all start out as, right? 
We all started out back in the late, you know, maybe in the, in the, in the late 50s and 60s. It was always a professional visitor. We'd go and we'd say, hey, let's have a cocktail at lunch. I really like Jim, so I'm going to buy his product or service. Didn't have a lot of choices and things like that. Then we went through to the product selling. Hey, this product's better. So now you have a lot of CEOs that were engineering. They were engineers. They developed the product. Today you have flip-flop. I don't know if you know these statistics, but about roughly 20% are now engineering-focused CEOs. They're more sales-focused CEOs. 80% today are sales. 20% today are engineering-focused. So if you look back 40 years, it was exactly flip-flop. 80% were engineers. So that, that falls right in line with professional visitor. You start talking about products. And then finally, we started to talk a little bit about solutions. So instead of saying, here it is, I'm a good guy, please buy from me. Now we talked about looking at CRMs and saying, what, what can we do? Do we track? It's a, anybody, anybody here, it's a numbers game? Sales is a numbers game? It's not quite a numbers game anymore. It's part of it, but it's not quite a numbers game. What we've moved to is selling value, selling, uh, solving and selling business issues. So what are your problems? And then consulting on those pro problems. So how do we consult? Do we sell? No, we service. We just identify solutions and solve those problems. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this slide because I know you all get that, but I want to be, have a clear base on what we're going to be talking about when it comes to support and what I consider Web 2.0. Not just a CRM to track activity, but let's talk about Web 2.0 to provide a customer experience, a fully antiquated and integrated customer experience for your customers. Go ahead. So this goes into a little bit more about what we talked about. Um, customers are more focused. Uh, we need to be more focused on the customer, customer-centric, and also educated, and, and all of the information online, again, they really don't want to talk to us. They don't, they don't want to, because you know what? They're talking to our competition, and they're not even talking to them. You know what they're doing? They're researching them. Everything's available online, so it's the information age. I don't know if, I, I was talking to somebody outside, too, about um, sales. I don't know if you know, but salespeople are drastically, the sales jobs in America are drastically reducing. So not only do you have to be a better salesperson, and you have to play in these type of realms, selling value, business issues, and consultative selling, but also those jobs are getting harder to compete for. Why? Let's talk about movies. Download it. Why do I go to a movie theater? Download it from Net, you know, Netflix. Download it from Vudu. I don't want to see anybody. I want to be in the comfort of my own home. Let's talk about uh, uh, education, learning. I want to get an MBA, but I don't have the time to drive a half hour to the campus or longer and then drive back and sit in a class and listen to somebody. I can just do it over video. I can do it over e-learning. So it's changed. Complex UC and mobile applications. Now let's focus on our industry. That's where, the, that's where it's headed. So how do you manage those customer expectations? And also, how do you astonish your customers? Because I'll tell you what, it's no longer valid to say, yes, I sold that customer. I'm going to throw them to the back of the heap, and that customer will just be there. And, and you're going to be, uh, you're gonna be hopefully, uh, not too surprised, but it's very expensive to lose a customer. So while most companies still are in the age of focusing on sales and bringing on those new customers, you need to be focused on the back end and making sure you keep the customer base you have, as well as focused on bringing on new customers, but new innovative, innovative ways to do that. So let's talk about the industry. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because um, I think everybody kind of believes the data that I'm going to show up here. I want to watch my time as well. So what does the research say? IT leaders are saying that 25% of their workforce, 60% of them are saying they're already mobile today. I just asked most of you, uh, most of you raised your hand. I just asked and said, hey, who uses their home, their, their office phone? Some of us don't even have home phones anymore. 
it's a sign of the time. So, so the world is going mobile. And you know, my question to you, and I, I'm gonna ask it directly, are you going mobile? Are you thinking about your businesses in supporting people in the communications environment about going mobile? Because eventually, again, we're gonna have a little iPad, whatever it's called, it's, it might be the Google, Android, whatever it is, but we're gonna have just one personal device. It's gonna be a PD, personal device, kind of a PDA, but with all these applications on it. And that's, that's where the industry's going. So here's what your peers believe. 73% of the IT leaders believe mobile devices will replace desk phones in the next seven years. And there's some data that believe the people, by the way, it's already happening. Uh, I happen to have a support company that we have about 140 uh, seats in Phoenix. We're building out a facility, a big facility in Mexico, and we're looking to expand in the, uh, in the Midwest. And we, we support small to medium-sized uh, VoIP co hosted VoIP companies because they have no choice. They are mobile, right? Though, you know, I talked to this gentleman. He's a, he's a consultant. He does sales. He does service. He does you know, implementations. He does everything, which is great. So how are you going to support your customers? Go ahead to the next slide, please. So business trends. Um, Let's talk a little bit more about going mobile and supporting those customers. Enterprise companies, as well as other companies, small to medium-sized companies, are responsible for all these devices right now. Blackberry, iPhone, Android, um, you know, the, 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 the other smartphones that are around, the iPads. Especially enterprise companies, I mean, they've got a host of devices, and they've got problems right now. Trust me, I talk to them every day. So, where are we going in unified communications and social media support? Well, obviously, we need to integrate all these technologies. That's what uni unified communications is. And, and I think we all have a handle on that. The real question is how. And, and more importantly is, once you get that customer, because I think, I think you know, a lot, of the cust or a lot of the companies that you're distributing, you know, they're figuring that out. But the next question is, how do you support it? And if you look, they're already doing it. 44% uh, of these IT leaders are supporting an intranet today. A third of them are, are supporting social networking sites, not for social networking, but for actually managing their business. Talk about uh, support discussions and forums. We do that for our customers. How important is that? It's huge. Remember what I said earlier, it's the new sales. By the way, if anybody has any specific questions on some of these slides or whatever, feel free to interrupt. I don't have a problem with that. Um, internet blogs. That's how people are finding out about things today. Groupon, you think that's huge? <laughs> you know, I mean, th th that's where the world's going. So enough of that. I'm going to beat that to death. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Eli, please. So I think the biggest question is, what does all that mean to you? What it means is, you, as business owners, as business providers, as service providers, you need to provide a customer experience, and it's critical to your business. I, I'll tell you what, we support a lot of VoIP providers. Many of them were selling, weren't selling as much as they were losing in attrition. That means they could sell $40,000, $50,000 monthly services, and $60,000 was going out the back end. I'm not lying when I say that, because all the focus is on the front end, and the churn was happening. Now, those, those were extreme cases, but let's say you're a smaller business and you're selling you know, $25,000, $30,000 a month in revenue. What if you're losing half of that, $15,000 a month in revenue, and your churn rate is you know, X percent? I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I, I moved up uh, to run a division of WorldCom, MCI WorldCom. I was pretty young at the time, and I ran the division out of Seattle. And I walked up there, and, uh, and, and I, was, I was young and, and, and a, a not quite HR savvy, let's call it that way. So I ended up uh, nicely exiting about six out of nine managers within two weeks. I'm a little embarrassed about that. I was proud of it at that time. But the, the, the point was they weren't at their numbers. So I started diving into it wondering why. I said, why aren't, you know, I don't understand. Seattle, you know, you guys are one of the biggest 
you know, cities and regions. It's an awesome region. It's technology. You got Microsoft. You got, you know, Wamu up here, Washington Mutual. You got all these neat technology spinoffs of Microsoft. What's going on? Well, I started meeting with these customers. We had $100,000 a month as, a, as the number two provider of telecom services in the United States. We had 100 grand a month out of, don't quote me on this, out of let's say, you know, seven million a month worth of spending out of, out of Microsoft. 100 grand a month. AT&T and Sprint were just kicking our butts. Why? They go, you know what, you guys, you know, you guys aren't doing a good job. So I immediately implemented a strategy, and, it was, and I'll tell you what, it was through pain, it was through figuring it out, it was through asking people. But what I did was, I didn't focus on sales. I told my boss, leave me alone for six months. We went from 58% of plan down to 51% of plan in six months. He's just going, oh my gosh, this young kid, the guy goes up and whacks six out of nine people and, you know, and just goes nuts and he's hyper and he's an idiot and da da da. I look like the biggest idiot because I took the worst performing region in the country to the worst performing region in the country minus 7%. But what did I do? I focused on the customer experience. So I started fixing these. I found out, hmm, Amazon, Yahoo, these companies that, you know, just the small company called Starbucks and all this stuff. We had a little bit Western wireless. We had all these little tiny bits of, we just didn't service them. So over that six months, we were selling, but we weren't selling with, you know, hey, I'm a great guy and I'm a professional visitor. We were selling, what do you need? What do, you, what do we need to get more business in here? Well, first of all, you got to just do this, 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 this. Oh, that's what the customer wants. Okay. So every one of those sales managers that I fired, I didn't replace. I took the three and I turned them into customer service managers for six months. Everybody thought I was whacked. They go, you're nuts. I said, I can't afford to hire a bunch of salespeople right now. I need to fix what we have. Well, obviously the story ended up good, otherwise I wouldn't share it with you. But <laughs> the next six months, we we're the number one, two, or three region in the company every single month. Why? Because what we did was, I saw the bleeding and I said, hang on, quit throwing in more blood, quit the blood transfusions, let's put a tourniquet on it, let's make this wound heal, and then we'll slowly put in the, put in the juice. And, 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 that's where, and that's where I think a lot of people are missing it today. I see it every day. I'm meeting with all kinds of telecom companies, all kinds of small broad soft and asterisk providers and I'm going guys I, I see where you're what you're trying to do but don't forget the back end so customers are uh, communicating differently enterprise adoption of mobile is there we're moving from premise to mobile workforce we've got to support these customers differently most importantly these trends are changing how you need to support your customers I'm doing on time here so how do we own the customer experience? Well, every time you touch that customer, there's a defining moment, okay? And it doesn't matter where those defining moments are. If it's in the beginning of the sales presentation, if it's in the ordering, if it's in the provisioning, if it's in the back-end support, or if it's in the technician that goes out to help him or her, it doesn't matter. They're all interactions. So this just illustrates what, my point. It doesn't matter, but I'll tell you what, the number one thing I learned, and the number one thing that I learned about turning that region around in a very big company in a very short period of time, it all started with people. And every one of those individuals touched the customers. And all of those interactions equals literally thousands of impressions on your customer. So it all starts with people. And I think that's, that's probably the most important takeaway. I don't think it's anything new, but to support your customers, it's gonna be about your people. Go ahead. So we talked about this a little bit ago, what's important to your customers. Stop asking or stop looking at through the, through the glasses or the hourglass through your eyes. Start looking at what's important to the customer. Ask them. 
A lot of people don't do support forums. We do support forums. We go to our customers and say, hey, what is J-Curve? What do you want? How are we doing, first of all? You know, your customer satisfaction reporting is doing awesome. You know, they're saying we're doing a good job. This is going great. This is good. From our perspective, we're doing a great job. What do you think? Because guess what? We don't, we're not the decision maker on how you're doing. Your customers are. And your customers' customers are. End users. And what I mean by that is if you're a provider, those end users need to be happy with you. And it's huge. So what are the response metrics? How do you identify what's important to them and then feed them what's important to them? We went to Microsoft and we said, what's going on? Well, if you were to do this, 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 that, nobody asked them. It's Microsoft. Seven million a, million a month at Telecom. And my people didn't go out and go, hey, you know, how can we get more business? Or what are we doing wrong? Or what are we doing right? Now, it took us a while, but guess what? They, they, they made my numbers for me. Not everybody has that Microsoft customer. I get that. But if we look at what's important to them, then we can identify what it takes to solve that problem like we talked about in the new sales model. I think this kind of illustrates what, what I just said, which is dealing with the world as it is, not how you would like it to be. This is the most difficult thing for me as a person because I know what I want, I know how it should be, and I, I got it all figured out. And then I ask my customer, and they inform me differently. And I bow out humbly, and I say, boy, I just don't get it. Or I think I know what's good for my employees. We got, you know, we got hundreds of employees, and I go, yeah, this is what's good for you. And then I sit down with a focus group and sit down with 10 of them and go, don't consider me the CEO. Consider me a friend. What can we do different? And I hear all this stuff that we're doing wrong, and I go, wow, I thought I had it figured out. Ask your customers and deal with the world not according to you. One of the biggest challenges I have in speaking with business owners that we partner with is, you know, let me ask somebody, um, do unto others as, just finish that sentence. Right, no, that's wrong. Do unto others as they would like to be treated. Treat others the way they would like to be treated. Right? We, we've, we've learned our paradigm, our paradigm here for, you know, and, and it relates more than support, but for support, yeah, we've learned that. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. No, we're all freaking different. <laughs> I'm a lot different, trust me. So I don't want to be, you know, I want to be treated in a direct manner. I want to be treated, hey, you're a jerk. I don't like you. Thank you. Bye and leave. Some people don't like that directness. Some people hate it. You gotta treat people the way they want to be treated. How do you do that? By asking questions. Go ahead. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna breeze through this for time, but um, I think it's really important for everybody to understand that every interaction you have with a customer creates a personal reaction. Um, we are all self-centered. Treat me the way I want to be treated. That's what, that's what your customers are saying. Customers that are familiar with you and understand you and you have a lot of contact with, familiarity will keep customers. And then the biggest thing in my opinion, or one of the biggest things in unengaged employees, um, that's gonna kill your business. I assure you, I'm in a people business, it will kill your business. Um, and we'll be talking about that in, 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 in a moment. And then uh, employees do it as measured, incented, and self, uh, celebrated. So you really need to, uh, you need to incent those folks properly. And, does anybody have a guess on how to incent them or what to do to incent them? Who do you ask? Who's the most important person to ask if you want to talk about incentives for employees? Bingo. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm saying this somewhat begrudgingly, but I didn't get that for a long time. I really didn't. It's not, it's not human nature to get that because you know it all, right? I'm the leader of the organization. Well, as soon as I learned that, what we did was we took J-Curve's org chart and shifted it. We got customers up here. We got first-in-line employees here. We've got middle-level management. We've got upper-level management. And I'm the peon on the bottom. Chief bottle washer and janitor, I don't care what you call me. All I do is I serve the people above me. And you know what? I'm so far removed from the customers. I try to contact them. I, I, I talk to their CEOs. But I got to rely on all these layers in order to take care of my customers. So who should I be taking care of? Who, we, who should we be taking care of? 
Who should we be serving? Our employees, if you're in management, or the customers. And you can't fake it. That's huge. You just can't. It's, it's, it's not able, I mean, you just, people feel it. As much as I'm not a touchy feel you guy all the time, I'm pretty passionate, but people will feel it. So this is a little model I put together um, for kind of a employee engagement. And it's, it's pretty neat. Um, I, I stole it from other people, as you can readily imagine, in that you know, nothing, nothing ever is perfectly, you know, is perfectly your own. So um, I took it from different pieces. But if you look and you have an engaged employee, and you have a great customer, then you have a great customer experience. But notice where everything starts and ends, right here, engaged employees. You talk about the company, I, I do this all the time at J Curve. I don't talk about the company, I talk about them. Because they are the company, it's a people business. And you know what, you can have the greatest software in the world, if you have nobody to sell it, if you have nobody to service it, if you have nobody to develop it, and you have no research and development, et cetera, you, you, your, your company will fail. So I think the, the, the engaged employees equals customer uh, experience with loyal customers, and it, taught, it, it translates into strong financial results. And now, this is one that CEOs cringe, but you gotta invest in it. You gotta invest in the people for low employee turnover, and you gotta invest in the support. And I'm not trying to sell you on J-Curve services today, I promise you, but I see this as the biggest problem in business today, one of the biggest problems. Yeah, if you can't get customers, you have nothing to support. Don't get me wrong, sales is an issue. I own a sales consulting company, and that's a huge issue as well. That other, that, that other one as well. So I'm gonna be a little bit repetitive because I think it's important. Employee engagement's important. Supportive working environment. Attitude, it's all about attitude. Knowledgeable people. But uh, again, it's all about people for the strong financial results. Go ahead, keep going. All right, so why does this matter? Well, I think I've said it many, many times, but without retention of customers, your business will fail. You will think that you're selling all this business if you don't keep, keep watch on those, uh, on those retention and churn rates, it's gonna kill you. And you know what? You're, what happens invariably is you're selling, 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 and then you look back and you go, oh, didn't realize I had that wound back there. Didn't realize I had that, you know, that uh, hole in the boat, if you will, and, and, and we're sinking. And, and that's how it happens, it happens quickly. So I, I, would, I would make sure that you understand that customer experience is the new sales model, and if you astonish, astonish your customers, if you go above and beyond, and everybody in your organizations has that mentality, they will do amazing things for you. You know what, Walmart is one of our customers. We make significant margin on Walmart because we sat down and said, hey, we're willing to take risk with you. Nobody makes significant margins on Walmart, trust me. But we really do, because we sat down and we said, listen, here's what we're going to do, here's what we'd like to do, we'll take risk with you, we, we think you're a good bet, and we des designed a sales model, uh, excuse me, a, a pricing model that works for them. It wasn't us, it was for them. What's important to you, Mr. Customer? They said, hey, paying customers, new customers. Great, what if we can, what if we can add value and prove it? They go, great. Okay, well then we'll take half our fee in a base fee, and then we'll be able to price it to where if we can prove that we brought you these customers, what do you think about 5%? How about 4%? Not a problem, we'd be happy to do that. Good, we'll, we'll, we'll take a risk. That takes my sales background and puts it into support and service. And we can talk about that offline if you'd like. And then the final, the most important thing is why it matters is uh, value of a customer over time. I don't know if everybody realizes this, but did you know that it's seven to 10 times the cost to acquire a new customer than it does to sell, to, to go out and, uh, excuse me, to, to keep a customer from a support perspective, customer experience? Seven to 10 times. Yet, yet most organizations are, are spending seven to 10 times in the front end to sell a customer instead of focusing on how they should keep a customer. And we've all been through it. Go ahead. So, um, I'm not here to sell you on outsourcing either. However, it is an opportunity. And why is it an opportunity? First of all, if you're small to medium-sized businesses, you know, a lot of people don't have scalability. Um, you don't have the opportunity to provide 24-7 
365 live coverage. Uh, J-Curve happens to do it. There's other, there's other providers out there to do it. But what do you want to do? You want to focus on your core competencies. If you want to grow your business, you need, to, you need to understand what business you're in, where you're good. How are we doing on time? It's a wrap up pretty soon. Wrap up, this is I think second to the last. So you need to focus on what, what business you're in, number one. Number two is anything that is not core to your business, you should be outsourcing or look for a, somebody that is better than you at it. Because you, you can't be all things to all people. I don't know how many requests I've gotten for provisioning and all these different support requests. And we said, you know what? We're really good at this niche. We're really good at technical support, building into clients, and figuring out their problems and solving their problems from a support perspective. We don't want to get into this. We don't really want to get into this. We would love to, you know, yeah, it looks really attractive, but we're not going to. So focusing on your core competency and, and having the knowledge base. Um, J-Curve, and, and again, this isn't a sales pitch. I want to be clear on that. We have a lot of knowledgeable voice over IP experts. How long do you figure it takes to get somebody in a support capacity deep into level two trained that's, that's fairly new to the business? How long do you think? Anybody have a guess? Hosted VoIP, six months, did somebody say? Three months at least is right. Um, anybody think longer? Because it's longer. Six months. We found about, to, to be really efficient, we found about eight, eight and a half to nine months. But, but they can get up and running in three months. You're right. And you're right. Six months, you know, they're doing pretty good. But to be really efficient in our J-curve operation, we need eight and a half to nine months. So talk to a small to medium-sized business and tell them that. So um, processes and procedures. We've, you know, excuse me, companies that do this for a living have been through it many times. They've implemented many. They can go, hey, you're screwing up here, or you're doing a great job there. Here's what you have. They, they, they've seen it before. Um, technology, infrastructure, we talk about four things. People, number one. I think I've hammered that to death. Process, technology, and infrastructure. So we have, uh, we have uh, patented technology uh, that, we, that, that we use and, and other co companies use as well. Infrastructure, obviously, it saves you on the costs of you know, servers and phones and da, 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 all that stuff. And then, uh, obviously, there's usually a cost benefit. Sometimes there's not. Um, but, but most important, I want you driving at an increased customer experience. Go ahead. So I, I hope this theme has resonated through this presentation. I hope you grabbed some value on what you specifically can do to service your customers. And, and, and most of all, I hope it maybe opened your eyes a little bit more to this is, you know, this is an area of, of, of investment, training, and focus that maybe I'm not focused on today as much as I could have been. And, and, and if that's the case, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you were able to spend some time with me. And I, and I really do appreciate your, uh, your time. Any questions?